Hi friends, I want to talk about the importance of containers inside polyamory. <clears throat> and by containers, I mean consciously chosen, chosen structures to hold a relationship, uh, specifically around timing, but I think a container can be whatever you define the container to be. So let me start by telling a story of when, about a year ago, actually, exactly, I was dating this guy who had never been polyamorous before. And once, you know, I realized that we liked each other, I was like, okay, so I would really like to define our container. Um, I would love to see you like twice a week. I want our container to be twice a week. Like Tuesday nights is my night, it's my autonomous time. So I would love to drive up. He lived like 30 minutes away. Like love to drive up here and go on a date and we can have sex and like I can stay overnight. And then one night a week, You'll come up to Reno and you'll hang out with me at my place and that will be our container. And he was like, oh, well, that really lacks spontaneity. And I think sponta spontaneity is romantic. I'm like, cute. Um, so totally, totally. In a monogamous world, like we were in NRE, right? So in monogamy and in some some structures of polyamory, especially if you don't have kids, NRE is a really fun time to do things like, okay, we're going to have a date night every Tuesday and every Thursday, and we're going to surprise each other throughout the week with other spontaneous dates and hang out way too much and all the time. And that's something you can dive into. And polyamory has, especially for polyamorous parents, we have these things in place um, that prevent us from doing that, like children, like other obligations, like other partners. And so defining the container allows, allows me to show you love and some de definitions of love, the spontaneity and is, is one way to show love, but it, as a polyamorous parent or just as a polyamorous person, defining the container and creating a schedule is actually how I show you that I love you and care about you because I am choosing a time to factor you in. And then we can design the rest of our lives around knowing what that looks like. Sorry, this is a thrift store find and it is serving major bisexual energy today. Um, <clears throat> now let's talk about in a world in which I don't have kids and I don't have other partners, okay? Let, not saying monogamous, but let's say like, you know, I don't have any other partners and I meet someone. What I have learned about myself is that the container is a very healthy way for me to navigate NRE for sure, but also to create sustainable, lasting relationships because for me in NRE, and I think also as like an ADHD <laughs> neurodivergent person who's just like a golden retriever when it comes to love, I'm like, let's love all the time. The container acts as, um, the metaphor that always comes to my mind is like those bumper things they put up uh, in bowling lanes so that kids don't get a gutter ball. The container acts as those bumper thingies uh, to prevent the relationship from heading into the gutter for me. Um, because otherwise I will overindulge. So the container uh, prevents me from overindulging or helps me to not overindulge. The second thing that it does is it helps create, it forms a mold that is sustainable for me. And what I mean by that is, uh, I'll give you the example of me and Ja, my other partner. He has not really been dating I mean, he's like sprinkled dated other people since we've been together. And then he was with that one girl where that didn't work out. Uh, but now he's getting a lot more serious about trying to find other sustainable poly partners. It's syrup on my hand. Um, and, you know, we had this really, we had, we had, <laughs> We had a talk last week and two weeks ago where we had to renegotiate our container because technically our container was Tuesday nights. Like Tuesday night, I get out of bedtime, dinner time here. And so like at six o'clock, our date night starts. But then there were other times throughout the week they weren't planned, but like I'd be like, hey, what are you doing? And he'd be like, nothing, I'm at home. And because he lives literally six blocks away, um, I could you know, leave after bedtime and go have some late night shenanigans. And so that was happening a couple times a week and it wasn't in the container, but we were both like fine with it. And he came to me and 
actually, no, he didn't come to me. <clears throat> I had to initiate the tough conversation because I could sense that something was wrong, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, I initiated the conversation about renegotiating the container because he felt like I was taking up too much space in his mind and also his schedule. Even though our container was technically one day a week, it had leaked into this kind of whatever, whatever. And so where I was going with this, so first of all, the container creates like predictability. Uh, the container also prevents me from going in the gutter. <clears throat> I think that was one and two. <laughs> The third, can, the third thing the container does, and it might be kind of related to one and two, I think it's a third separate point, and it's the most important point, it's what made me want to make this video, is I don't downshift well. Again, these are all terms that like I'm making up or like I have coined for use in this space. These aren't terms you're necessarily going to find in a book. Um, so I'm going to try to explain them, but I don't downshift well. So... If I meet somebody, especially somebody who doesn't have another anchor or primary partner, and so I end up, our love story ends up kind of taking on that role, which is like what was happening with me and Ja. Ooh, let me give you, let me give you the shoulder, the Gen Z droopy shoulder. Um, I, so I don't downshift well. So if he were to meet somebody tomorrow that, also didn't have a partner that wanted to be more of an anchor part, or even if it was still just somebody who was going to take up the equivalent time as me, it is very difficult for me to go from, I have you this many times a week, or we're together this many times a week into downshift into less. So to, to kind of compare anecdotally, I have a metamor who is like, she doesn't have kids. She has a nesting partner, anchor partner, former metamor. She loves to dive into NRE. Like she is like, let's just fucking go there. And when it's time to downshift, we'll downshift. And she's like all about it. And she's like, usually when the downshift comes, I'm ready for it. I need it. And she just goes from fifth gear to third gear to go with the downshift metaphor for those that drive stick. And she's fine. She slows down the speed, goes into third gear, gets on the back roads and she's good. I don't do that well. Even the, and I think it's part of my addict nature, definitely a bit of a hedonist and have some addictive qualities. So what I have learned is that I do much better creating a container that is sustainable. Like that's the mold, right? So if we meet and we are in NRE and we, it is healthier for me to create a mold that is going to be the same when you meet another partner or two other partners or whatever changes in your life. I, so right now, John and I redefined our container to be one night a week, Tuesday nights. And it's so funny because he was like, he was like, I think one night a week is enough. And I was like, cool, let's do that. And then he was like, what if that's not enough? And it's like, I, as a peer support person, I'm, I'm always about the 30 day trial. Let's try something for 30 days. And on the 30th of every month, Ja and I are going to check back in on the current defined container. Line itemed out, right? Define your container, line item it out, and then on the 30th of every month, we're going to go line item through line item. The frequency that we text, um, whether or not, you know, sexting is okay in text because he's not always okay with that. That's part of our container. Um, our Tuesday night dates, do we see each other outside of that? So we're going to do that for 30 days. On the 30th, we're going to go back through and see how we feel about it and then redefine the container if we want to because God bless polyamory that we can just keep redefining the container. So again, I'm not saying that this is a universal way to be like, that's why I tell you the story about my former metamor who loves fucking just go blasting off into NRE and then redefining the container and coming down. I don't do that well. So right now, if Ja were to meet, you know, his Joe, whatever that's going to be, a more uh, an anchor partner who's going to spend more time with him. We're trying to practice non-hierarchy, so I don't want to say more significant or more important or more in love with, although he might feel, <laughs> he might feel that way. Anyway, um, if he were to meet, like, a, 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 who would become his nesting anchor partner tomorrow, he would not need to change our container of one night a week, 
Tuesday nights starting at six, going until midnight, and hopefully in, hopefully turning it into an overnight, but he has to get a new bed. I hate his bed. Um, he could meet like the love, of, the love of his life, one of the loves of his life tomorrow, and it wouldn't change our container. And that's better for me versus let me have as much of you as I can now until you meet somebody and then let's go down to one night a week. That shit, I don't downshift well. I don't downshift well. That's the whole point of this video. So I just want to talk about, even if you do downshift well and you're kind of like my former metamor, defining your container is still important, boo. Like it's so, so, so important, even writing it down um, so that there can't be any discrepancy. Clear and specific, clear and specific. We always want to be clear and specific in everything we do. So anyway, this is my mini sermon about the importance of containers in polyamory and my own hatred of downshifting. And please let me know in the comments if this resonates with you or what you think about it or what you got from this. And let's continue the discussion in the comments. Love you.